computer. There we go. Now, good morning, Richard. It's good to see you. I'm glad that you're able to join with us. I'm going to be presenting this to our community at the break time on Yom Kippur, and then it's going to be available for people to watch on YouTube and uh, Facebook afterwards. So it's never a dull moment with the American Jewish Committee, right? So let me just do a quick introduction. I have here Richard Hirschhaus, the Los Angeles director of the uh, American Jewish Committee for the Los Angeles region. Uh, it would be the West Coast, um, which is a pretty big area, right? That's correct, Rabbi. Thank you. And can you define for our people, what's the job of the American Jewish Committee? So first of all, let me wish everyone uh, a Shana Tova and a Gamar Chatima Tova. May it be a good and sweet and peaceful year for all of us. It is always a, a joy uh, to join with you, Rabbi, and to, and to share um, updates from the uh, ever-evolving and fast-changing uh, world of of uh, Jewish communal relations and 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 anti-Semitism, frankly. Okay, as we've so seen it's never over this last year. Never a dull moment for you. So yeah. I will share with you that uh, that AJC uh, is fundamentally uh, concerned with uh, pushing back against anti-Semitism. We've seen uh, a very disturbing uh, increase in the number of episodes in the incivility that accompanies uh, these episodes. And it has risen to levels in America, both from the uh, statistic, uh, statistical uh, narratives, as well as the uh, anecdotal uh, uh, reporting from Jews of all uh, walks of life across the country, that uh, something is going on. There is a, uh, a rise in uh, a sort of in your face uh, degree of anti-Semitism. Sometimes it's verbal, uh, sometimes it's physical. It is certainly uh, targeted at uh, at our institutions, houses of worship, and other uh, places that we that we hope will be uh, safe spaces and communal spaces that should be um, immune from from such uh, uh, hate. But but we've seen this uh, very troubling rise over the last year or so. And we are deeply engaged at uh, at AJC in working to push back. And probably the uh, most significant development over this last year was the announcement uh, from the White House in May of a U.S. national strategy to counter anti-Semitism. Uh, this is uh, a, a an extraordinary uh, and unprecedented uh, pronouncement. And it is a, um, a blueprint, really, that has teeth, that has substance. And ultimately, the nearly 200 uh, recommendations across all levels of government and all layers of society uh, rest upon each of us to, to fulfill uh, the implementation and to see that this is more than, than merely uh, an important statement from, from the highest uh, pulpit in the land. No, it, it's a... Sometimes a can't win situation. Uh, I, your counterpart, uh, in the ADL, Anti Defamation League, they've been attacked on all fronts. On as I, as I mentioned to you, three points. Uh, they, they got in trouble with Elon Musk. He went into a headlong fight with them. Uh, might represent a right wing response to them. Although it's hard to know where he is and which wing he's in. And then the progressives also attack ADL because it's not sufficiently woke. I remember when there was an instance with Starbucks and the problem of uh, sensitivity training for Starbucks staff and ADL offered to come in and they were attacked. Starbucks was attacked for allowing ADL to offer and they were blocked out. And then we have our own Jewish community that doesn't always like what the ADL does. So um they're getting on all sides. That's what it seems like here, what's happening with the rest of us, too. Well, I, I would say to you that, uh, and, and, and first of all, for, for the congregation, you should know that I had the great privilege of spending the first uh, 21 years of my uh, professional career uh, working for the ADL, um, in, first in, in Miami for a couple of years, where I really 
uh, cut my teeth in that arena, and then nearly eight years as the Northern California director in San Francisco, and then uh, a decade with the Illinois Holocaust, with uh, with ADL prior to going to the Illinois Holocaust Museum for, for a decade. And so, I, I, as you've correctly uh, pointed out, the fact that ADL is um, uh, getting it from all sides, um, I would argue is a reflection of the organization doing its job. And, and for those who accuse it of being uh, lackeys of the left, um, look no further than, uh, than those uh, discordant voices on the right who, who attack them as well. It is, um, and, and, and those voices on the left, as you point out, with that whole Starbucks uh, um, uh, c- scenario of, of a few years ago. Uh, these, are, these are heady days. These are heady times in America. There is polarization. There is incivility. There is a hardening of positions on both the right and the left. And that, um, that malleable middle uh, that that reasonable middle, if you will, where we all should try to find some common ground and at least speak to one another with uh, uh, a degree of respect and and civility. Uh, that's what we have to search for. That's what we have to to find. And and those are not always um, uh, the loudest voices, of course. But we ought not mistake uh, reasonableness for for weakness. And I think our challenge going forward in this new year is to continue to call out anti-Semitism and racism and bigotry and extremism uh, wherever it rears its ugly head. And again, sadly, we've seen plenty of examples on uh, on both sides and both extremes of the spectrum. I, as somebody who has a granddaughter just finished university and then two grandkids in the pipeline for universities. Um, Also concerned what happens in the educational arena. I know we have the problem of the right of uh, books being banned because they are touching on sensitive topics. In Florida, you can't touch on racism. On the other hand, I see in the academic world, Uh, Princeton University allowing a professor to add in his curriculum uh, mandatory reading of a textbook that says the Jews harvest bodies of Palestinians. Uh, And then uh, here in California, uh, we see a school district in Santa Ana adopting the curriculum that was actually shut out by the Department of Education as inappropriate. And uh, I know the Governor Newsom himself uh, put himself on the line not to allow that curriculum, and yet they adopted it anyway. And the problem is that that curriculum focuses uh, very heavily on, uh, quote, Zionists as oppressors, as white settler colonialists, uh, and which in turn turns kids who would not know better against the representatives of Zionism, which would be Jews here in America. Uh, what's happening in that wing? What's the deal? So, so with respect to, uh, I, I will share with you in, with respect to the ongoing uh, challenge in, in California with uh, ethnic studies, which is um, you know, in principle a, something the Jewish community supports and should support because the heart of an inclusive uh, ethnic studies curriculum is taking uh, uh, an important reflective look, holding our society up to uh, a microscope and looking at how groups that have been uh, historically oppressed uh, ought to be uh, understood and and uh, welcomed as full participants in, in our society. So there is, um, it's, it's, it's more than just uh, Looking back at at uh, the parade of horribles of of uh, in in American history, it's really about understanding and appreciating and celebrating uh, the diversity of, of cultures. What we've seen, unfortunately, play out in California is that a very small and myopic uh, group who come out of the um, the protest movement of the 1960s uh, met in secret for many, many months, 
and produced a model ethnic studies curriculum for the state that indeed uh, 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 traded in, in anti-Semitic uh, themes, certainly anti-Israel uh, elements, and was uh, uh, wholly off the mark in terms of, of really trying to represent and celebrate the mosaic of diversity in this state. For a period of a good three and a half years, uh, AJC and, and our many partner organizations, the Jewish Federations uh, here in California, worked uh, very, very uh, intently to improve upon that model curriculum. And ultimately, a version four was produced and uh, met with the full support and endorsement of the State Board of Education, as well as the governor. And that is what uh, should be the law of the land in California. Um, there is a bit of home rule as it comes to the various districts up and down the state. And so the uh, so-called uh, liberatory, liberated ethnic studies crowd, these are the original uh, drafters of that first uh, flawed version, are peddling their wares. They're approaching uh, school districts, most of whom um, are naive, only want to do the right thing. And they're selling them uh, a bill of goods. With respect to Santa Ana, just recently, AJC joined with ADL, the uh, Brandeis Law Center, and stand with us in a lawsuit against the district just two weeks ago. And not uh, taking issue specifically with the, the school board's uh, consideration and ultimate adoption of the flawed curriculum, that is in fact an issue, but from a legal standpoint, arguing that the school board violated the Open Meetings Act in California, known as the Brown Act, by essentially making a decision in secret before convening its public meeting, entertaining no uh, uh, opposing views, and allowing members of the Jewish community who attended that meeting to be heckled and berated and uh, uh, become the target of, of, of anti-Semitic slurs without in any way intervening, calling for decorum in the session. And so that was a, a, a gross violation of the Brown Act. And sometimes while we always seek to engage in what we could call moral suasion, sitting and talking and trying to be reasonable, sometimes the power of, uh, of the law and the power of the courts needs to be brought to bear as a deterrent and as a and as a um, a message that this this cannot happen with with impunity. To the larger question of ethnic studies in California, we have work to do. We many of us thought that we had we could declare some uh, what of a pyrrhic victory with that fourth version because it was much better than what was initially unveiled. But because this liberatory crowd is uh, not going away and simply refuses to accept reality, we have our work cut out for ourselves. So we are in coalition, AJC and many other organizations, including the ADL, the federations and others, and working to approach, again, that, that reasonable middle on the presumption that most school districts in California are focused, most importantly, especially in the aftermath of COVID, of getting kids to attend school and, and cover the basic, uh, you know, the three hours of education. And so with whatever limited time or space they may have to think about the adoption of ethnic studies, we wanna make sure that they're receiving the appropriate information. And that's something that we just have to redouble our efforts in, in the coming year to make sure that that we reach these districts. And it really is, uh, uh, will require an unprecedented somewhat Herculean effort on the part of the organized Jewish community. Yeah. It reminds me, a lot of what's going on reminds me of the Newton's uh, law of motion. Every action produces an equal but opposite reaction. And so when one side pushes like they did without consulting with the public, you have a brouhaha on the opposite side. So you have school districts that are pushing just the opposite direction. Um, school districts are uh, adopting an approach the parents will not swallow. Uh, it happened in, I think, Glendale. 
uh, and it's in a broad variety of areas. And uh, Rabbi, I'll, I'll uh, apologize for interrupting, but I, I realize I did not really address the front, the first part of your question that had to do with college campuses. And we have um, a major challenge on our hands with with the college campus. It is a very different place than uh, than you or I encountered in terms of what it is to be uh, able to be proudly and openly Jewish on a campus to celebrate Israel or even to um, declare oneself a proud a proud Zionist. That is um, uh, a much more difficult uh, endeavor today. Uh, fundamentally, uh, you mentioned Princeton. That's outrageous. Uh, a more recent example, uh, as we gather in, in synagogues this weekend, there will be a conference taking place at the University of Pennsylvania, known as the uh, Palestine Writing or Writers Conference. And it's a group mostly of, of, um, of poets and writers and authors, some of them polemicists with very uh, clear and, and, and long track records of anti-Israel animus. But one of these uh, so-called Palestinian writers, whose name just jumped off the page when I saw the list, uh, is none other than Roger Waters, the front man for the, uh, the the rock group that I that I can no longer listen to. Yeah, I, can't, I can't, can't enjoy change, up against can't change the, the, the station fast enough. Pink yeah. Floyd, and yeah. and that that should have been uh, a red flag to the administration at Penn um, to uh, to to distance themselves early and and forcefully from what's going on. There have been many, and they continue to this day, conversations taking place. Um, for AJC's part, we have worked closely with the administration. We treat to treat this as a as a teachable moment, an opportunity for the administration to understand what an event like this uh, does to the psyche of a Jewish student and their sense of safety and security on campus. And hopefully the campus, hopefully the university will learn. In my experience, uh, it often boils down to, uh, in, in order to move universities to um, to exert some common sense and make the right decision, it's when the alumni relations department starts getting phone calls from concerned alums who, uh, who also are donors to the institution. That's what often uh, tends to move uh, these institutions to uh, to wake up and and uh, and correct uh, their errors. Uh, reminds me of the sixties, <laughs> the golden days. Uh, how we took over buildings. Okay, and then the alumni called, yeah, and said, "What are you doing?" All right, uh, let's move out of the sixties. Okay, we're in the twenties. Oh my gosh, it's still hanging over us. So we got <laughs> third. My third issue, we're Jews in the United States, we sit here, but of course we are tied by the umbilical cord to the state of Israel and the people of Israel. And so there's no question that what's going on is very painful. Um, and our AJC has been getting involved in the conversation. Can you give us a rundown of why the Supreme Court is such a hot button issue or is it a cover for other bigger issues? What's happening? Sure, it is. Um, you, you are absolutely correct that what is playing out uh, publicly uh, for all the world to see is uh, is deeply uh, painful. And uh, for those of us who, who love Israel, who recognize that uh, Israel has its share of uh, detractors and uh, and and outright uh, uh, mortal enemies in the world. Um, this is the last thing uh, any of us need. And what's really playing out in Israel is um, a crescendo that has been uh, building steadily for the better part of the last thirty years, and it speaks to uh, the nature of of the democracy and the uh, hope. Uh, the fervent hope that the democracy uh, of Israel not be so uh, reduced um, and and weakened that ultimately um, the state that we that we love uh, our spiritual ancestral home uh, becomes uh, a theocracy uh, and worse and so this has been a battle 
it's it's really a battle that speaks to uh, the nature and, and part of the uh, the govern the governance structure in Israel. Israel is not a constitutional democracy, and and um, uh, the legislative and executive branches, as it were, are are really one and the same, meaning that uh, a ruling coalition, uh, an elected prime minister, and the coalition that he or she uh, assembles also um, uh, gets the spoils of that victory and the ability to uh, occupy and be appointed to ministerial positions. The only real check against those two aspects of, of government um, is the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court is uh, is the place where uh, there is uh, some balance in the system. Supreme Court justices in Israel are not uh, appointed for life, uh, unlike the U.S. There's a mandatory retirement age of 70. There is a selection process, which is one of the uh, points of contention in the current uh, judicial uh, debate, judicial reform debate. But what, what's really playing out here is the degree to which uh, there can be checks and balances in the um, in the government in in the in the uh, in the society, and this is really a struggle for the soul and the democratic character of Israel. Uh, when we see tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands gathering uh, Motzei Shabbat uh, for the last thirty eight plus weeks, um, it's a powerful, powerful expression of. Of democracy and patriotism, people of all walks of life, all backgrounds, literally wrapping themselves in the flag. I had the the privilege of joining in one of those demonstrations just uh, uh, a month ago, and it was extraordinarily moving. Uh, particularly at the very at the very start of the of the speeches, before anything begins, everybody together, quiet quietly and. Uh, in unison, uh, sings Hatikva while the flags are waving. Very, very powerful. This is hopefully going to uh, result in the end in some sort of compromise that is fair and and that um, keeps uh, the country from continuing to uh, to be torn apart. Uh, the the approach that AJC has taken is that we have uh, advocated and continued to for a reasonable. Uh, compromise that preserves the civil rights and civil liberties of all Israelis and Arab citizens of Israel as well, and and that helps move the country forward and begins a process of healing. As we speak today, it's unclear uh, where that will go. We are at a moment now where just uh, a little more than a week ago, the Supreme Court heard, you know, sat all, all 15 justices, which is unusual because typically there's never more than six who sit for, for a hearing. And the Supreme Court hears thousands of cases during the year. It's unlike the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court. And so they were sitting to consider the law that the Knesset adopted uh, six weeks ago that effectively eviscerated the Supreme Court's uh, power to overrule um uh, any uh, legislation that is viewed as as unreasonable. So the court did not did not issue an injunction when that law first passed, said, okay, the law is on the books. We are on recess. We will take this up in September. And that's what they are doing now. And the question is, um, what will the ruling be and how will that uh, play? And, and there is um, potentially a very uh, serious looming uh, crisis and potential paralysis in, in how the government uh, continues to function that will result from, from this ruling. But I would, I would say to, uh, excuse me, to everyone, continue to, to read, continue to stay involved, express yourself. Uh, I will say, I feel a certain visceral discomfort to the notion of taking to the streets in America to protest uh, what's going on in Israel. And that's a personal, it's a personal decision that rests with everybody. 
uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, earlier this week was uh, visited the uh, Twitter headquarters for a sit down with with Elon Musk. The whole thing was a little a little strange. And there were protests outside, mostly by uh, Israeli Americans, completely understand that. But there was also a protest in Union Square in San Francisco with leadership of the organized Jewish community that apparently had requested a meeting with the prime minister and and uh, and uh, were rebuffed. Watching that play out, this is a personal view, this is not an AJC view, uh, although it could be an AJC view, uh, seeing uh, people I respect uh, and admire greatly, uh, colleagues in the Jewish community, uh, protesting in Union Square did not feel right to me. It made me uncomfortable. It's not a rally that I would have attended. Um, and so everybody has to find their their place in, their, in, in, in this conversation. But it's important to, um, to find one's place and not sit this out. We all have a role. We all have a voice. And we should all make ourselves heard. You know, you mentioned something very interesting about, you know, we have to see how our reactions to what's going on in Israel are seen by the people around us. So you have all these uh, people on the margins with their knives drawn to get the Jewish communities. Oh, wonderful. Look how the Jews are getting it themselves. Look how we are turning Jews against Jews. Uh, and that's a very scary thought. I remember one thing about uh, Prime Minister Begin in his day. He was the ongoing opposition leader par excellence till he became prime minister. But as I understand, never, never once would he speak out against the government of Israel when he was outside of Israel. Inside, he would condemn them. He was the most <laughs> one of the most fiery speakers, maybe even demagogic speakers there was, but outside Israel wouldn't say a word uh, because he understood that we can't bring our dirty laundry outside. And that is basically what is happening, which is very, very painful for us because people are very happy to see dirty laundry. Uh, that's, and I read your point very well. Okay, so got a lot of work cut out for us, Richard. <laughs> a lot of work on all sides. Uh, and uh, I, I want to thank you. Um, I'm glad that you're able to join with us. And my, uh, it's my pleasure. My, if I may make one fun. more, just go ahead, just yeah, one more comment. Also, I I, I cannot um, emphasize enough how significant the uh, what what's being described as the U.S. Nas U.S. national strategy to counter anti-Semitism uh, is. Um, that was declared uh, by the White House in May, um, uh, rolled out by by the president, uh, vice president, second gentleman, um, special envoy, actually ambassador on anti-Semitism issues from the State Department, Deborah Lipstadt and, and others. And this is uh, a real moment of opportunity. And AJC is working uh, very, very uh, intently on, on the implementation. It is a whole of society effort to bring anti-Semitism uh, to the forefront and to um, to frame it appropriately, not just as a as a Jewish concern, but really a uh, concern for all of America and and ultimately the fate of our own democracy. And so, this is uh, something to keep uh, a watchful eye on in in the year ahead. You'll be hearing much more from AJC and and our partners. Uh, going forward about how to how to implement and really take advantage of of this uh, remarkable uh pronouncement and opportunity for our for our members uh if they want to follow up on what ajc is doing uh can they get newsletters or you have the website the best way is to is to uh, log on to our website ajc.org and there is an opportunity to subscribe to uh, regular newsletters. We'll make sure that uh, the work we do in Los Angeles, which is uh, uh, summarized in a, in a monthly update, is also uh, uh, in everybody's uh, email box. And we're delighted to to continue to um, to partner with you, uh, with the synagogue. And of course, this was um, this was my uh, remarkable uh, father-in-law, Alex Satmary's. Uh, um, uh, happy place and and wonderful comforting place 
uh, every week, uh, all of us shalom. And so uh, it, it's always a joy and a blessing to be able to uh, uh, to speak to you and, and to the congregation. Thank you. And my, my regards from the congregation to you, to your family, and the, in uh, memory of your dear father-in-law, Alex and Mari. I wish you all a good year. Shana tova, gemachat, Everything. Shana tova, kol tov.